Requiem, a short film written by Tony P. Ali. Living room. Two dismembered adult bodies charred from fire slumped on sofas in the corner of a room. Bedroom, continuous. Blindfolded, battered and bloodied, a nine-year-old girl cradled in someone's arms. Girl whimpers, she nods her head. Prison warden's office, prison guard Fiona hurriedly fills out paperwork, crucifix tattoo on her neck. She becomes irritated by somebody the other side of her desk. Stay behind the white line, please, Mr. Shanks. Shanks, a heavily built prisoner, a vaguety and sadness about his demeanor. He shuffles gingerly backwards. Do you understand what's happening today? Oh. How <laughs> can anybody understand? No one tells you anything. This project began two years ago. I've seen hundreds of your type. Cocky, arrogant, spouting ancient Greek philosophy delivered in Shakespearean prose. But look at you now. At least back then you took responsibility. It was almost endearing. Now every one of you, a pathetic mess. Maybe because now you get what you deserve. She stamps the paperwork approved and places it neatly into a box with some small personal effects inside. I'm glad it hasn't been explained to you. I do enjoy being the one to break it. All I know are rumors. They spoke about a project. I overheard them at the infirmary. accept that the finality bestowed upon you is punishment for the crimes for which you have been convicted and thus forth you are now a subject of the equalization project what does it matter bates a male guard stands at the back of the room observing fiona here's what's now going to happen you are to be taken to your cell where you will receive the first phase of the treatment What's going to happen to me? Uh, the majority react to the treatment after initial nine months of normal bodily function, after which your metabolic functions will stop along with any natural aging process. You will remain detained within your cell until that happens. The majority, it doesn't always work. The lucky ones don't survive. I can't live like that. In approximately nine months time, you will be released from prison where you will be designated a role. A role? What do you mean a role? Depending on your skill set, generally you'll be assigned to some public service duty. However, you will no longer eat and you will no longer sleep. Your reproductive and endocrine system will become redundant. All you will do is carry out a role. That will be all you do. For how long? While it's impossible to test, it's expected to last a hundred thousand years or so. If I may offer some advice, it's best not to ask too many questions. I've signed the consent form on your behalf. Goodbye, Mr. Shanks. Two prison guards enter the office and manhandle Shanks away. He offers no resistance. Fiona puts her hands over her face. Bates drags a chair towards the desk, sitting opposite, observing her with an unsettling affection. This isn't right. How can you keep doing this? God knows none of this is right. 
condemnation to an eternity of guilt with no way out. The religious lot still kicking up the biggest fuss, you know. Not the human rights groups, as the media likes to report. Is that a dig at me? Not at all, Fiona. Surely even religious types are willing to let something so incomprehensible slide when set aside for rapists and murderers. This treatment. I still don't fully understand it. Equalisation <clears throat> is a unique commodity, both a, a miracle of science and the holy fucking grail. Who'd have thought mankind could engineer eternal life? Stop nature dead in her tracks. The entire mythology, a fountain of eternal youth, condensed into an inconspicuous pill they shove up your ass. He pulls a set of keys from his pocket. One particularly large and medieval looking. Jingle, jingle. You know what? I think it's uh, that time again. Uh, please. Not now. Oh, come on. Now is the perfect time. You need something to take your mind off things. And I, well, I think it's obvious what I get out of this little uh, mutual back scratching. Reaching over the table for the keys, Fiona is restrained by a thick chain around her waist, protruding from within the wall behind her. The chain retracts and she is thrusted back into her chair. Oh, oh damn it! Ah, 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 ah. Naughty girl. The judge from your trial still hasn't returned to work, you know. He still can't bear the thought of it. If Mr Justice Callahan had his way, this key would have long since been tossed. So in case there was any doubt, I'm the one taking all the risks here. So that's it then. I suck your dick. You unchain me for an hour a day and I'm supposed to be grateful. Bates removes a pistol from a holster on his side and places it on the table. He alights his chair and strolls towards the office door. Two years. What's two years compared to an eternity? You know, despite your proclamation of such, you weren't actually the first subject. Just the first to survive. It is believed, although not proven, that women respond more favourably to the treatment because of their more natural tendencies towards submissiveness. A willingness to to conform. The pistol on the table catches Fiona's attention. She can just reach it. Bates locks the door to the office, removing his jacket. Yeah. I don't think you understand how lucky you are. That man, that monster, you just sent to an unenviable, unending death, will suffer perpetually, along with the countless others. I'd say your crime is far, far worse. But fortunately for you, my fairest Fiona, I'm not the kind to hold grudges. Not with holding all the cards being far more favourable. He replaces the pistol back into his holster and walks ominously around behind her. Who knows? One day you might be free of this nightmare. Things can change very quickly. All you have to do is remember this. At least I won't be around forever. Bates reaches for the keys in his back pocket. Now missing. Jingle, jingle. Fiona has them in her hand. She stands up, pulling the pistol from Bates' holster shoving him to the ground and pointing it at his throat. Jesus, Fiona. Do you have any fucking idea what happens to you if you pull the trigger? Any idea? You're wrong about me. What have I told you? They were wrong about me. Okay, listen, and I believe you. You are innocent. 
But that doesn't change the fact that if you pull that trigger, your only chance of freedom will be gone. I promise you, I can free you. I can't change the equalization, but you can at least be out of this nightmare. She drops the pistol. Bates stands up, retrieving the pistol and replacing it. Come on then, sir. Let's get this over with. Bates pulls his trousers down, sits on her chair. She kneels down, pushing his knees apart. He tips his head back. She takes the keys from her back pocket and thrusts the large key through his throat, out through his neck. He gasps and gurgles, eyes wide and bloodshot, the rest of the keys becoming soaked by blood from the wound. Like you said, Mr Bates, what's two years compared to an eternity? I don't feel right about us religious types because right now the prospects are looking good for both of us. She pulls the pistol from Bates' holster, gazing into his eyes, the pistol pressed up into her own jaw. You were wrong, though. There is only one way out of this nightmare. Bang! A blank screen, a thud. Interior bedroom, two years ago. Fiona holds the girl in her arms, sat atop a bed, the mattress stained with blood. Sorry this happened. I should have stopped them sooner. It won't hurt anymore. I promise. Are you ready? A beat. The girl nods her head, breathes heavily. Okay. Okay. Listen. I won't tell anybody what they did to you. I won't tell anybody what they have been doing to you all this time. Keep it a secret. I promise. Click. Slash. The girl's breathing ceases. Fiona looks into the camera, face riddled with a vague resentment, a solitary tear. She wipes it away, smudging fresh blood across her cheek. Made out. 